Good afternoon, everyone. I'm celebrating the cake today. This is the cake. I'm also, thank you. I'm also too cheap to buy at Denver, so this is Indianapolis, so I, I can build it all. It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker for the colloquium. Probably, I would say uh, sometimes you take a chance to do this, but if you feel like doing it, I won't, I won't be a cheap number of I'll be over there. I'll be out there. <laughs> here should be. Um, I told Andrea that I'd make up one thing for the speaking purpose. I list of highlights of what she called about, and one of them will be a quote. Um, so this is Andrea McKay, and Andrea is a Michigan virtual lead social studies instructor. So those of you that are into history and social studies, this is it. This is all for you. But if you're not, this is also all for you. So she's been the lead instructor since last August of 2015. She is also a Michigan Voice Educator Fellow. So she is a good fellow. <laughs> yeah, um, she taught at Jackson High from 2001 to 2015. She just told me she missed her, but uh, now she's completely a virtual teacher. And she had a lot of blended classroom experience in 2011 to 2015. Um, she is a graduate of our Master of Arts in Education program from 2007. She's also an ed tech evangelist. And if you were watching the Super Bowl yesterday, she was one of the girls in to his Beyonce in the entire formation. I one of those things I think is perfect. Without any further ado, I'm doing okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think if I had been dancing in the Super Bowl last night, I wouldn't be able to stand up today. But. Um, thanks for the welcome. I'm really glad to be here and excited to see um, all of you here and talk to you about a few things about working online as a completely online teacher full time and also about Michigan Virtual's I Educator program. Um, so maybe you've heard of that, maybe not, but we will talk a little bit about that today. Um, if you'd like to, I'd invite you to join me at bit.do teach slash teach online. And what you'll see there is just a little bit of a window for you to leave some um, comments or to chat and ask questions, kind of like a back channel. I think I'm famous maybe for trying something new before I've actually, you know, like run it, practiced it. I'll just be like, I'm gonna go with this and we'll see how it goes. So this is the first time I've used Tazzles. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys can, get in there and join me there and you'll be able to post some questions. I'll see it in my feed here and hopefully can then answer your questions. But if it doesn't work, please raise your hand, ask a question at any time. It's fine to jump in. I'm just really excited to see people because I teach online full time. So <laughs> um, this is exciting. So you don't have to talk to me through a screen. You can actually just speak up. I'm happy to answer your questions. And I will tell you guys a little bit um, about myself. I did work at Jackson High until this past August, and I worked there from my very first time teaching. Uh, right away, 2001, I started teaching there and had planned to stay, planned to retire from there. Um, I had an overall pretty great experience there. My last year there, for sure. I had the best kids I've ever had. I miss them incredibly. So. Um, I didn't leave Jackson High under some, you know, I don't know, fiery torch or anything like that. I just, I started teaching part-time with Michigan Virtual the year before. And so I taught full-time with Jackson High, um, mostly AP Psych, Psychology, and occasionally some Economics. And then I took on a part-time job um, with Michigan Virtual in 2014 and so I'd come home from my full-time job and I would meet kids online and run some online courses um, with them primarily over the weekends but also checking in during the week so um, over the summer this past summer Michigan Virtual's lead social studies instructor was promoted and that left an opening and I applied and they accepted me so here I am now on this whole new wild adventure and this having a whole semester now under my belt of teaching full-time online um, it's very different and very much the same at the same time so I'll talk to you guys about those similarities and differences uh, mainly for today 
I'm going to be talking about what services we provide with Michigan Virtual, what it's actually like to teach online full time. Um, you might have some ideas about what that's like and I will let you know if you are, you know, true there or if that's a big myth or a misconception. So um, I'd also talk to you about the iEducator program, which is kind of new and exciting. So my life before, I started with Michigan Virtual um, as a public school teacher. You guys, if you have had any classroom experience yet, you might recognize um, some of these here, especially I think by the end, like the last one, what I really do. By the end of my teaching career, I was not dragging home buckets of paper. I had pretty much switched to paperless classroom uh, using Google Drive and other Google tools. Um, from about 2011 on, I really started adding a lot of online elements to my class at Jackson High, my classes, uh, because I found that my students could interact and learn a lot better when we broke out of just the four walls of the classroom. So I started putting tests online for AP Psych, and that gave students a chance to get back in and retest when they missed the first time. Um, and so they got to start striving for mastery, which was really important when they were going to take an AP course at the end. So I wasn't dragging home papers, but it still felt every bit <laughs> like that, right? And my life now, what people think I do, um, the only difference maybe between what I do and that woman there, I think she's like working on a crossword puzzle. Is she working on a crossword puzzle? Because I don't even know where to find a crossword puzzle these days. And she looks so happy and content at her computer. Um, that's not quite what it's like as an online teacher. I typically have two to three screens up at one time. I'm usually, you know, between those screens. And then I have an office phone from Michigan Virtual that'll ring as well as my other phone where other people are contacting me and students are sometimes texting me. And so it feels like I have a thousand things up in the air all at one time, which is really what teaching feels like anyway. <laughs> so maybe that's not tremendously different, but sometimes it does feel like this. And I hope this isn't too loud here. get the picture right that's kind of what it feels like on an average day in my life anymore I know I for sure thought teaching online I'd probably you know ease into the day I'd get to get my cup of coffee whenever I wanted use the bathroom whenever I want that is a bonus um, but it's definitely incredibly busy okay and I don't know if I was quite as prepared for that as I you know expected um, it would be, but it's, it's constantly moving. There's so much to do all the time. But working for Michigan Virtual has really been a dream for me. Um, it's been, I feel incredibly fortunate, okay? So even though I am online all day long, working from home, I live here in Jackson, in the city of Jackson, um, I am interacting with people all over the state. So as lead social studies instructor, I teach a full load of classes, um, but I have less students than some of our other full-time instructors have. Our other full-time instructors um, teach more students, but I have different responsibilities as the lead. It's almost like a department chair position. So I, besides teaching courses, I also run department meetings and we have in my department for social studies, there's five full-time teachers and um, about 17 part-time teachers from all over the state. So I connect with those teachers and make sure things are going well uh, in their courses. If there's a course issue that comes up, I am the one who gets into the course master and fixes any problems in the master course and then any course copies that are out there. Um, so to kind of help you make sense of it. 
there's a master course and then individual teachers get copies of that course and we have an IPD department that's our product development and they're the ones in charge of creating the course so I'll talk a little bit more about what that's like too um, coming up here but I feel really very fortunate that's a picture of my daughter actually she's 10 this is her last year at elementary school for her entire life I've never been able to um, drop her off at school in the morning okay because I always had to be at school an hour before she did um, to teach so I get to spend that time in the morning with her which is really awesome um, you know and it's it really is cool working from home it's not what I expected but it's still very very fun uh, and very collaborative which has been really exciting for me so a little bit about Michigan virtual and what their vision and what their goals are um, a lot of people think that Michigan virtual is a school that kids can take you know six classes through Michigan virtual and that's their school that they go to and that's not the case Michigan virtual is a service provider um, so they partner with schools so I have students from um, the UP. I have students from different places around Michigan. I have a student right now from St. Martin in the Caribbean um, who purchases courses through Michigan Virtual. So you could get kids from all over the place um, and usually they're supplementing something at their school with a Michigan Virtual course. Okay? So they don't just jump in and take seven classes online. Um, usually there are also some homeschool students who are more likely to take more classes at one time online um, it's a little different working for a company as opposed to a public school uh, so now I'm a part of a corporation and there is more of a corporate feel and I always felt like people who worked in um, corporate offices you know that it's more like the TV show The Office maybe um, you know it's, it's different than working in a public school it's a different feel so it is a little bit different for me um, the slide is here and one thing that I really really want to point out is number five here Michigan Virtual does a lot of data collection uh, they actually run an organization um, as part of the university that is the MVLRI you see the name down here the Learning Research Institute where they're constantly um, doing and collecting data about what's going on in our online courses and how they're meeting needs of people around the state. Uh, so they do use a ton of data and that's kind of exciting to me to be a part of. Their values here I can definitely speak to. They put people first, um, students, stakeholders, parents, mentors, uh, schools, they're definitely not just a remote behind a computer organization. They're really committed to excellence and acting with integrity. Um, these values are promoted and pushed all the time when we are in meetings together uh, and when we are in meetings apart. So people there do embrace innovation and serve with passion. They're excited about what they do. Um, Monday mornings, we all log in to a all staff meeting through Adobe Connect and you hear like a lot of people laughing and cheering and it, they're excited to be there and you know I still like pinch myself I'm like is this is this real life <laughs> is this really what's happening people are happy on a Monday morning this is outstanding so <laughs> it's really a fun place to be a fun place to work and they value and really do push teamwork um, again you think you're going to be teaching online and you're left all alone and that's it but that's not true. Today I had two meetings that were collaborative with people. Tomorrow I have two meetings. Wednesday I have a meeting. Thursday I meet with the eye educator. So it's constant involvement with a big group of people. You're never just sitting there alone at home on your screen. Uh, it's definitely a little bit different maybe than what people think. So Michigan Virtual looks at themselves as a leader for change um, in terms of giving students some options. Uh, I don't think there's a single person at Michigan Virtual, I'm happy to say, that says online learning is the best way to learn and all students should learn online only. Um, I have not heard that. Most 
everyone I've spoken to really believes that taking an online course is a great option, that some kids learn really well in an online course. Just like some kids learn really well in your face-to-face -face course, and some kids may not. Um, it's an option for students, and it can satisfy a lot of needs that the school might not be able to meet. If you guys haven't heard about 21F yet, I'm sure you will. Um, just really, really briefly, 21F is the, the state law that allows students in grades 6 through 12 to select up to two online courses um, a semester. And so that's where Michigan Virtual, I think, fills a large need for many students and for many schools. But I also know a lot of schools handle this very differently. Um, as far as Jackson Public Schools go, there wasn't a lot of emphasis on this. I don't think a lot of parents, teachers, students really knew about the law or understood what it might mean. Um, so it really depends on how the school promotes it, maybe, or how the state promotes it. Um, but it has given room for Michigan Virtual to really grow because now kids can elect to take an online course. I know I'm kind of running through these, but please stop me if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. I don't see any coming up on my screen, so I don't know if it's, whether it's working or not working. But um, you're welcome to ask. So our iEducator program, which you guys can see here, the iEducators and the lead teachers um, from this past summer. So. About a year ago, actually, is really when Michigan Virtual started talking about using iEducators or developing an iEducator program. And um, they started searching for recent college grads in the teacher programs um, who would be interested in working with Michigan Virtual for a two-year commitment. So those teachers started about the same time that I did in, in August and are now through their first semester of fully online teaching. And then their second year with Michigan Virtual, they'll actually be in a blended program placed within schools, or that's the goal. I'm, we're, I think we're all kind of anxious to see what's gonna happen exactly and how it's gonna shake out exactly, but that's the plan. Um, so one of the branches of Michigan Virtual is a program called My Blend, and My Blend partners with schools, just like Michigan Virtual does, and provides content for teachers in a face-to-face -face setting um, to work on a blended program with their students. And so we have my blend coaches who actually go out to the schools and work with teachers in face-to-face -face settings on getting some online elements um, going with the my blend program. And so the I educators their first year teach full-time, a full-time load of students, um, with all virtual courses and then in their second year they spend time working with schools and connecting with the MyBlend program a little bit more. And then the goal is that after that we help them become placed in schools to be full-time teachers. Um, so it's kind of this almost like an internship into teaching and we think a lot of teachers and a lot of schools and a lot of administrators would really like to have teachers like this on board in their school um, because they can teach other teachers about how to teach online and incorporate a lot of wonderful online elements uh, into their classes as well. A video here for you about the iEducator program. Michigan Virtual University is a nonprofit corporation that got started back in 1998. Today, we're one of the most successful K 12 online learning organizations in the U.S. And our mission is to advance K 12 education through digital learning, research, innovation, policy, and partnerships. Online learning continues to grow at a fairly significant pace in the United States. Last year, it was estimated that around 3 million students in grades K through 12 took at least one online course. Michigan is very unique in that we have two legislative requirements for our state. The first began in 2006, in which students in the state of Michigan are required to have an online experience in order to graduate from Michigan school. In 2013, the State School Code Act was revised to include Section 21F, which allows students to take up to two 
online courses every semester or trimester. We are very interested in Michigan University University to make sure that the growth that takes place is around quality, not just numbers. And we're looking to forge a partnership with our teacher prep programs in Michigan. Uh, Michigan is a very fortunate state in regards to the number of teachers that we create every year. Unfortunately, many of those educators need to leave the state to become employed. We're interested in, in hiring a group of elite educators that believe that personalized learning is part of the future and want to do that through digital learning. Michigan's teacher preparation program has done an outstanding job preparing teachers throughout the state. One of the things that we do know, however, is that it's been very difficult to fully integrate online and blended learning in teacher preparation programs. One of Michigan Virtual University's core strategies is to build the capacity of Michigan school districts to deal with online and blended learning. And we came up with a program called iEducator, 21st Century Digital Learning Core, um, modeled really after the Peace Corps to try to get young people who are freshly out of their teacher prep program to come and work with us as online instructors and during that period of time to be trained on how to teach in a digital environment. Principals will be looking for our educators. Um, clearly, when we are doing interviews, we'll see a number of candidates that have, you know, a very uh, good skill set. They have a high GPA. They were engaged and involved in their student teaching experience. Uh, they have excellent letters of recommendation. So what really makes somebody stand apart? And I think that an eye educator is somebody that I would definitely be looking for as a high school principal. I would want somebody with that skill set to be able to come in and um, provide fun and online opportunities and also to be able to work with my other staff members and to be able to share those experiences. We've established strong working relationships with over 500 school districts in the state of Michigan. What we're looking to do now is strengthen and build a relationship with our teacher prep institutions so that we can address the learning needs of our schools in the 21st century. Our I educator hiring process will begin this April where I educators will be able to apply online. All of the interested candidate applications will be screened thoroughly and will be provided an opportunity to participate in a face-to-face -face interview with our current online instructors here in Lansing at our Michigan Berkeley University office. From there, we will select 20 eye educators to join our ranks and begin an onboarding process this summer. I believe Michigan teacher prep institutions play an incredibly vital role in the landscape of public education here in the state of Michigan. And we know as we look to the future, online and blended learning are going to be core strategies to personalize learning for the K-12 student population. We need your assistance in looking for that elite group of people who want to jumpstart their career with a two-year paid teaching assignment in Michigan virtual. Transforming teachers, changing lives. Transforming teachers, changing lives. Transforming teachers, Changing lives. Transforming teachers, changing lives. For more information, visit iAgitator.org. So that's a little bit about the iEducator program. Um, I have three iEducators in the social studies department, and so I get to speak with them pretty regularly. They're all from Michigan. Um, one is just after she took the job and got started, she moved to Boston. So she is still a Michigan certified teacher, and she still is an eye educator, um, but she's working from Boston, which is kind of fun. So she's flown home, I think, twice, or it'll be twice next month for different things that we have going on. Uh, we do have teachers that work out of state, but are still a part of Michigan Virtual, and they're required to come to the office so many times a year, maybe twice. Um, but if you are interested in learning more about being an eye educator or you want to be an eye educator, I know that we are starting to kind of move into some of the college career fairs. I think I'm gonna be at the one at Michigan State um, in April. And then there is the MVU job website um, where you fill out AppleTrack applications. I don't know if you guys have had that experience yet, um, but an AppleTrack is it's like an online application and a lot of it will stick with you from school to school if you're applying at different schools, which is kind of nice, um, but each one has its own features. And that's starting next month and into April. Basically for iEducators, it is full-time pay. You are teaching full-time. 
Um, you have a four week onboarding course that you work through with Michigan Virtual to help you understand more about becoming an online teacher and so that you know what it's like to actually teach a course. And so a lot of that is done um, online, of course, but some of it's also with you in the Michigan Virtual Office in Lansing, um, where their headquarters are. So once you become an eye educator, you then get weekly departmental coaching. I meet online with the eye eds um, pretty frequently or as needed. And then there's also weekly live webinars. So every Thursday, our eye educators log in we have an Adobe Connect room, and there's a very specific focus throughout the entire year uh, for what is going to be taught. And so we, it's been great for me coming in because um, as a new teacher online, fully online, I've learned a lot through this webinar series as well. So every Thursday for an hour we meet and learn a lot about different um, techniques, different tools to use for teaching, um, we've also talked a lot about things like um, meeting accommodations, 504 plans, IEPs, and how to handle those online. We've talked about plagiarism. We've talked about providing good feedback. Like each week, there is a specific focus and a very interactive. Um, all the eye educators and the full-time staff join in uh, for those weekly webinars. So that's part of the deal, and I think that's really an exciting thing too. I know as a first year teacher for me, I was assigned a mentor, but that's about it. <laughs> so it's really exciting to have those professional development opportunities throughout the entire year um, where you're actually learning on the job and learning things that you can use right away. It's changed a lot of what I've done in the classroom already. So um, it's pretty exciting. And then like I said, blended learning experience in year two. Our eye educators also have edublogs, and I'm, I hope you guys can access them. I'm not entirely sure if they're accessible outside of the company, but this is the, the website. And you'll see each eye educator for this year is there, and they've been blogging throughout the year um, based on writing prompts that we give them in the weekly webinars. So it was a little bit more heavy in the first semester, and it's lightening up a little bit as they continue on. Okay, so I do see a couple questions here. Um, how do I, I educators participate in things like parent meetings or school district student assessment analysis and reporting? Um, for Michigan Virtual, we do not assign grades to students. As they work through the course, we provide a score report to the schools and how they're doing. Um, so far yet, I know I haven't been asked to join in on an IEP. Um, at Michigan Virtual, I sure did at Jackson High, but at Michigan Virtual I haven't been asked. We usually just get notification and we work with the mentors, we contact the students and the parents so that we can all reach and take care of the needs that they have um, if they need an accommodation. Okay, So I have a student right now who did tell me that she has an accommodation for um, ADHD and she requires more time on tests which is not a problem, and um, she might turn in assignments later. So for our assignments, for any class that's not an advanced placement class, our students really don't have deadlines. So they can work at their own pace. They can turn in work whenever they'd like to turn in work. Uh, our goal as teachers is to make sure that they're turning in work regularly and not that last week of the semester. So our semester ended um, January 22nd. That morning, I woke up, I logged in to see how everyone's doing, and I had 468 assignments to grade, which was like, like a little disheartening, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but just like in a school setting, you know, your semester ends and you have so many days to turn in your grades, and we do have a big window to get that last rush turned in. Uh, I know. To prevent that, I need to contact students, mentors, parents as much as possible throughout the year. So I need to constantly be looking at my data. I need to constantly be looking at where my students are in progress, um, as well as how they're doing on tests and quizzes and make sure that they are moving forward and that they're not stuck. And we have a lot of tools 
that allow us to do that. So I can click on their um, login reports. I can see if they're sitting on one page for a really long time. Maybe they fell asleep. Maybe they're stuck, right? Um, they have more access to me, I think, than kids who were actually sitting in the classroom did, believe it or not. They can reach me in so many ways. Uh, I have open office hours twice a week. So Tuesday afternoons and Tuesday mornings and Thursday afternoon, kids can log in and catch me online in my online office, which is um, an Adobe Connect room. So the other day I had a student walk in. I was so excited. <laughs> I almost fell off my chair. That poor girl, I was like, oh my gosh, you're here. <laughs> like, this is great. Because it was a new strategy that I was trying. I hadn't done it before. Um, and there's a doorbell that rings when a student enters my room. So I don't have to sit there looking at my screen waiting, but a doorbell will ring. And so I was so excited. And she said, I, I really am struggling with this assignment. I was like, all right, we can do this, you know, and I was able to bring it up on my screen and screen share and walk her through the steps and she did it just fine. So she was able to submit that assignment without any problem. She just had the need for a little bit of coaching. Um, but I find what most of us do if that doesn't happen, if kids don't meet us online, um, is that students turn in their work and maybe they did a great job or maybe it's a mess. Maybe they totally missed it. And so every teacher I've talked to at Michigan Virtual, every single one of them, we provide a ton of feedback. Like that's most of my job as an online teacher now, right? So I tell them, this is where you did really, really well. This is where you're struggling. I'd like to see some improvements here for next time. Or if you'd like to redo this and try again for a higher score, absolutely. Just let me know. I'll open it back up. And a lot of kids do take advantage of that. So we're you know, really pushing towards mastery and not just having kids look at it as I got to do these six assignments to get through the course or however, you know, not six, but just to move along, you know. So it's that constant interaction and constant um, pulling them with you and helping them to progress. Um, plagiarism and teaching about it. We have a lot of great online tools for plagiarism. Um, it's kind of one of those things, you know, I knew kids were doing it in my face-to-face -face class and it drove me a little bit nuts, but I also had to think about why they might do that, you know? So there is a, a plagiarism matrix that we use and we, it's in the courses, we share it with our students, we share it with the parents and mentors as well. Um, and it's pretty tough. If kids are caught plagiarizing, they can get kicked out of the class. So, because it's something we do have to be so careful about. Um, but any written assignments that they turn in to me, we use SafeAssign and Grammarly. And SafeAssign, when a student submits their work and I open it up in Blackboard, I can see how much of their assignment, sentence by sentence, matches any other website or any other assignment that's been turned in. So I can see if they match, you know, with an outside source. I can see if they match with an inside source as well. And so it'll tell me, you know, this sentence or this paragraph matches this student's work from your class also. Because sometimes I have students who are um, all taking my psych class from one school during their first hour, you know? So they might be registered as a class. And at other times I have students who are uh, taking the course alone from their school. So they might be the only person in that class. So it depends on, on what you see there and what, you, um, what you'll get in terms of plagiarism. But the safe assignment is really, really nice. Grammarly does a very similar thing. I can copy and paste their work into Grammarly or upload it into Grammarly, and it will tell me how much of their work is coming from an outside source. And then, you know, we like to treat the first time as a learning opportunity in a teachable moment and to share with them, listen, you need to be really careful about this. Here's why, here's how to address it. So we work at that quite a bit. Um, is it hard to be on the computer all day? I feel like I already was on the computer all day anyway as a face-to-face -face teacher. Um, the last year of teaching, I had Chromebooks in the classroom, so each of my students had Chromebooks. My, the year before that, they were on laptops, so, um, you know, but there still was a lot of dialogue 
and a lot of connecting in the class. It is a little bit tough to be on the computer all day. Uh, <laughs> my husband's a nurse and he comes home from you know a 12 hour shift and he's like, I got 14,000 steps today. And then I pull out my phone and I'm like, I got 300. <laughs> and it's not, I'm not joking. <laughs> so I think I need to move our refrigerator maybe farther away <laughs> so I can walk a little bit more. But it's terrible. Um, at the same time, yeah, I don't love sitting. I'm looking at some other things. I do have like a taller desk, but I like to have a few screens open at a time. So that's a little bit tricky. So I can stand. Um, I'm really pushing now like on my wish list for a uh, walking treadmill with a desk thing. <laughs> I think that might be my savior eventually. But I, I definitely have to make a point now more so than ever to like actually move to get up. That is tough. Um, yoga helps a lot <laughs> as far as the bat goes. For students taking a class, okay, are they in school in a study hall, home, or both? Yeah, all of those options. So um, these are some of the questions coming up on the screen here. Study hall, some of them are in all together as a group. Some of them are, like I said, the lone person taking that course from their school. And then there's a great mix. So I have I have really all of it. I have kids from the UP, like I said, kids from the Caribbean. So they could be, they could be anywhere. Um, personalized learning is another question here, which is a great one. Some ways that you can personalize learning online that you can't do in a traditional or blended setting. Um, I'm actually going to come to that here, I think, maybe in just a second. Yeah, so if I jump ahead just a little bit here. Um, I can kind of talk to you guys about these different methods in terms of how they look in a face-to-face -face class and in terms of how they look in an online class. I won't spend too much time talking about the face-to-face -face portion because you guys are probably familiar with that as students um, and as people who are in getting into teaching more and more. Um, so I'll try to focus on the online, but that's a question that I will definitely hit here. As far as the content goes, I think that's been a big change for me moving with Michigan Virtual. So before, as a face-to-face -face instructor, I spent so much of my time creating or coming up with the content, right? And trying to figure out, like, this is what I have to teach. These are the standards I have to meet. How am I going to do that? Um, that was a huge part of my time as a teacher. Whereas now online, that is very little of my time as a teacher. Um, I do still provide a lot of supplemental materials. I do have a YouTube channel, a YouTube playlist, where I you know, get content that I think will help my students all the time. But I don't spend as much time planning because the course is already developed. So the way Michigan Virtual works, they have a production development team their courses are in the process right now of going through the QM um, rubric for Quality Matters to make sure that they're quality content. They're, it's quality course content and not just some you know, log in and breeze through the course kind of deal. I'm also going through the QM training as are like all of the uh, full-time instruction staff. So we're all moving through QM to find out how do you know if it's quality content? And just because I think it's good, sorry, it <laughs> doesn't mean that um, you know everybody will agree or if I might not agree that somebody else's course is really great content, but the QM rubric gives us a way of looking at that and talking about what is quality content. Um, so we're there in the process of that, so a lot of their courses are being redeveloped, which is really pretty exciting, I think because um, they're making some better and better courses and I'm teaching a few of the new ones and I really like the direction that they're going in. So they have course content developers and they have course specialists and a lot of times those course specialists are people um, outside of the company who, for example, AP Psychology, I teach AP Psych, our course content specialist is a college professor of psychology and so he works with the production team um, to develop good content for what students need to know for AP Psychology. So it's all there, okay? Um, so I don't have to create it. That gives me a lot of time to do a lot of other things. 
And most of that time for me now is spent providing really good feedback to students and helping them grow. As far as the learning environment goes, you know, you guys can probably guess how different that is face to face versus online. Um, yeah, face to face, you have them there. You can catch them right there. That's great. Online, who knows when they're logging in? I can't believe how many kids work like really late on a Sunday night. It's always the thing when I, you know, I leave my computer shut down on Friday and I'm like, yes, zero items need graded. This is great. I'm set for Monday. It's going to be a breeze. And then I open up on Monday and it's, you know, 150 assignments need graded. And you're like, how does this happen? But it gives students that chance to work when it's a good time for them. Um, and today, today's kids, man, they are busy. Our, my students, my AP Psych students, I can't believe the things they have to do in their schedule. They are a really busy group. So it provides them with that opportunity to work at a time that works for them. Um, you know, in a face-to-face -face class, these are some of the things that you typically see. And again, I'm not saying, you know, online's better than face-to-face. -face. I think they really work well together and both options are really, really great for students. Uh, it just depends on what their specific need is, right? So in the online course setting, um, we have variable students and there's a reason for that. So I might not have, um, you know, three classes or four classes or five classes that each have 30 kids in it. I have in my world history class right now about 70 students, um, but that's a good thing for me. I would rather have one class of 70 students than three world history classes of, you know, 25 or however many students. So it makes it easier to manage when they're all in one group. Um, if you've taken a course online before, maybe you have a feeling of that, or if you've ever had to teach an online unit, it's better to work with them as a whole than to do the same things in three different classes online. So it just makes management a little bit e easier. Um, we are high qu highly qualified teachers with Michigan Virtual, and we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one personalization. Um, so a lot of students feel like they're not one of 70 in my class. They really feel like they are getting individual instruction because I'm communicating with them individually all the time. Um, so we do have a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction, and I'll show you a little bit about that too. Uh, I'll give you guys the presentation. There is a video about like that walks you through the course a little bit so you can kind of see what a course might look like. You have an older version, what it is there. Um, as far as support, we have the instructors like I am. Um, each school that we work with has a mentor, a person in the school who is responsible for that student. Now how schools handle that around the state is very different. So some schools, the media specialist or the librarian might be the mentor and they might have 200 kids that they mentor as an online program. Um, other schools, each student might be assigned one specific mentor. It really just varies school to school, but that's somebody in their school that is going to contact me if they have trouble or if there's technology issues or whatever the case might be. The student for some reason can't or won't contact me. Um, we do have access to parents too through emails and phone numbers and all of that great stuff as well. Uh, I've learned a lot about how important it is to reach out more and more even now than having kids in your face to face because I don't get to see those parents. I have to make that connection. We have customer service that's there and a help desk that's open. Um, it's like 364 days a year, I think, and almost 24 seven. So they have the opportunity to meet with people or you know, if they're having some kind of technology turmoil, which always happens, uh, there's somebody they can reach for sure, always there. And then we have our SEM system, and that's kind of where students and mentors can log in. So a mentor for a school or a parent can log in and look and see exactly where students are at in the course. They can see um, how students are progressing, how close they are to finishing the, the course, and then they have these detailed um, 
progress reports as well that shows how they're doing on every single assignment as well as how close are they to, to finishing the course or completing the course. Uh, I see a question here for what's an online experience or class like for elementary students. At this time, Michigan Virtual doesn't offer any for elementary students. We do have some middle school courses. I know there's a study skills course and I know there's some eighth grade, at least in my department, there's eighth grade um, history and some geography that's being offered. So from what I've heard from the people that are teaching the middle level classes, the kids are, are pretty with it and pretty savvy. Um, as far as the technology goes, they don't seem to have a lot of trouble there. The teachers complain more that students don't capitalize their eyes and they don't, you know, they write like they're texting and they don't always use full, complete sentences. <laughs> but um, it, it's, again, it's going to be the same for any of those students. So I have a 10 year old, like I said, at home, and she's constantly, she's in fifth grade, she's like, Mom, I can take just online classes now, right? Right? Can I? Huh? You know? Well, no, not yet. <laughs> Maybe one day, but not yet. <laughs> So I think it's, it's very much the same as it is for the high school students. Um, it seems like most of them don't struggle to get going at this point. That's what I hear anyway. As far as those instructional strategies, like instead of being, you know, the teacher on the stage, which was kind of one of the great parts about teaching, honestly, like I loved my stage. I had a stage. And, uh, it was, I had a persona <laughs> as a face-to-face -face teacher. Um, online, I don't have that same opportunity to do my tap dance and my break dancing, but um, I should make a video, I guess, <laughs> and then I can share that with, with students. <laughs> but, um, you're more of the course facilitator, for sure. So you, you are taking a very different role, right? Um, at the same time, I have students connect with me as a group and we'll meet for an online review. I've used Kahoot online with a group of students who are in my AP Psych class to review. Um, we kind of start off every day with announcements. You know, I post a weekly announcement, all instructors post a weekly announcement, and that's where students are supposed to check first. It also gets emailed out to them. Um, so you can see that's from my civics course on top there. Uh, different things that are coming for the week. Here are some lessons. What you don't see, because this is a picture, is that I always have like live links below the picture. So um, here's some resources for this assignment. This might help you with this assignment. So students can kind of look through um, and see what's coming their way and what should be done. So even though we don't have due dates, they have a pacing guide that they all access and that keeps them on track. So 18 week course, um, you know, week one, here's what you should complete. Week two, here's what you should complete. So that they stay on track in the course. This is a picture, again, from a video of another one of our instructors who is an army vet. And, um, you know, he gets pretty fired up. He puts a lot of videos in his course. So his students know what he looks like. They know what he sounds like. Um, and we think that good online teachers students should know what the teacher looks like and what the what the teacher sounds like. Um, I, as lead instructor, I get to kind of pop into the different classes in my department and check and see how the teachers are doing. And um, it's really neat to see, just like when you walk into a class, you know, you can walk into a classroom and see a shell of a classroom. Or you can walk into a classroom and see a lot of life in it. And it's the same thing with an online class, right? A lot of the online teachers like to add a lot of life and sparkly graphics and things to grab attention or um, even just a nice look to their class. Um, some of the teachers include in their announcements, you know, here's what's up with me this week in case their students want to get to know them a little bit better. So there are still those opportunities to reach out to your students and let them see who you are. And I think that's really important to do. Um, in an online class. Uh, that announcement is one that I create from scratch. <laughs> That's in a PowerPoint. That's one of the questions here on the screen. Um, but I use PowerPoint for my announcements and then I've learned, um, actually Google Slides, not PowerPoint, but I've learned now that I've taught a whole semester of classes that I can 
tweak my announcements a little bit for the next time around if I have the same course, uh, depending on dates and things like that. So I've gotten a little bit better about that kind of management of what you're doing with your, with your courses. Um, and some teachers do post a lot of examples of assignments as well. So they'll show, you know, hey, Julia, turn this in and look how great this is. Um, and they'll give that demo of what Julia turned in. And with permission, of course. Feedback is a big part of our jobs as online teachers. This is where I really do connect with students the most. Um, there's not a thing that comes across my computer screen that is just a quick check over. Like we are, we have the ability with, uh, we use Blackboard, but if you've used any Google tools, it's very similar. You can highlight the text and leave them specific comments on where they need to draw their attention. Um, you can share a lot of resources with them. We really try to give great feedback so that students know how they're progressing and they know what they need to do to continue to progress or to get better. A lot of teachers with Michigan Virtual use a lot of different tools, um, some that are free and some that the company does provide for us. We try to use the reply acronym when we're talking about feedback. We want it to be timely. Um, this year, teachers have to respond to students' emails or messages uh, within 24 hours, okay? And that's where I start every single day. I check my messages in Blackboard. Those messages might take me 10 minutes to get through, and sometimes they take me two hours to get through. It just really depends on what's going on with students. Um, but it has to be timely. For assignments, our graded assignments must be returned to students within four days. Okay, so we have a four day window and then it has to be turned back in. Um, and a lot of times people are way ahead of that four day window. It just depends on the time of year and if you're getting 468 assignments in at one time. So uh, responsiveness is really, really important. We know that that's true in any educational setting. Um, we want comments to be really specific. We really strive to make them specific so that no one is saying, good job, Sue, you did well. Students need to know what they did well on. Where did they do well? How can they do better next time? And what should they look for in the future? So we make it effective. We try to keep it positive. Um, just like in a face-to-face -face class, that can be sometimes challenging when you're like, all right, no, I can't open this document again. I've told you three times, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but we really do strive to keep it positive um, because you guys know, Sometimes you put things on a text or on a screen and um, you want to make sure it comes across kindly <laughs> and appropriate and not frustrated, right? You want to keep the students with you. So uh, learning, we want to make sure they know how to improve, where to go, and then make it personal. So we always use a lot of names, right? I'm always like putting their name into the assignment. Like, hey, Joe, you did really great on this, but. So um, we also, at Jackson High, I was starting to learn a lot more about John Hattie. They are really working towards the visible learning program there. Um, so I've shared a lot of that with my teachers as well. And we really do focus on leading students along a path, like show them how to progress and, in their assignments and your feedback. You can see there an example of feedback to a student that one of our teachers left, okay? And it's very common to see stuff like this. You did great with this. Here's what you need to improve on. Don't forget to add in this. Please reach out to me. Let me know if you have any questions. You're doing awesome work. Um, so we do try to give really specific feedback. And there's an example here too I'll leave with you guys as well. Um, of a video example. So a lot of teachers will pull up on their screen the assignment that the student's working on, and then they'll open Gene and run through the assignment for the students and just post the link back in the student's feedback. So um, that the student can open the link and see the teacher run through and say, hey, I see what you did over here. Awesome work on this. This part right here, here's where you need to go there. So I'm a really fast typer, but some teachers are not you know, wanting to type as much. And so they'll use a video um, feedback instead, another effective tool.
So again, to personalize it, we have the video feedback there that uh, one teacher is there looking at. We also do Google Hangouts, Skype, um, Adobe Connect, Blackboard Collaborate, all of these great tools to like, reach anybody at any time. And we're kind of running down on time here. Um, just like in any class, there's discussion boards for students to collaborate together. We provide a ton of supplemental materials. Teachers like to post videos running through different um, lab experiments or uh, looking at different focuses that they have. Time I kind of mentioned, we are there all the time. <laughs> That's been a challenge for me, I think, too. Like as the evening winds down and it's time to start dinner, it's like, okay, I have to shut off and walk away, right? Because I can access this all the time. And sometimes, I'm not going to lie, on a Saturday morning, I'm like, if I could just get ten assignments out of the way, it would be really great. So I have to, um, you know, do that myself. <laughs> like I have to stop and move on or else I'll spend all my time in my courses. But I kind of did that as a face-to-face -face teacher too. So a lot of people think, you know, for students to go through an online class that they just trudge on through and that's the way it goes. And we really want to make sure that that's not the case for them. Our big goal is to get students to see themselves as learners of important material in the course. And so we're constantly trying to encourage them to try again, do a little bit more, make it a little bit better um, until they get through at the end. And we've gotten a lot of really positive comments from students. So I think, you know, we're definitely headed in the right direction there. Do you guys have questions for me? Please ask away. Just shout it out. Don't have to take it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think sometimes um, kids can ignore me better in an online class. So, um, in fact, I've reached out to one student like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's going on with this? I don't see you logging in very often. Where are you? What's going on? You know, it's like screaming into a black hole. But um, you get in touch with the mentor and then the mentor says, yeah, I have the same issue with that same kid when <laughs> I see him every day. So it just, it depends, but that's one thing that's a lot more difficult. I do miss, I will, you know, I'll admit it all the time, like I miss seeing students a lot. I love what I'm doing right now, um, but it's hard not to see kids all the time. And I think for our eye educators, they go both ways. Like some of them, they're like, this is awesome, I love this. Whereas a few of the other eye educators are like, I don't know, I thought I'd be like more in front of students. So it just depends. Either way. Anything else? Yeah. Um, I'm not a part of the retirement system, and that, that was a big deal in my decision as well. Yeah, so 15 years in as a public school teacher, plus some bought years or partially bought years, and um, that was a big decision and really almost did keep me from moving. But they have an excellent, excellent retirement program, um, and it's adding up fast already. So they do, my husband works at U of M, and their retirement program as a hospital employee is like the best in the state. Michigan Virtuals is really almost the same. It's really, really good. So um, I did, we did just have in a meeting, like an all staff meeting, it was announced that we are going to be looked at as a public school entity. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means for me. What it meant for that, the company overall was really that we could uh, do background checks more like a public school does, which is important still. So that was one feature that was kind of brought up anyway. Anyone else? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Really, really good question. Um, 
leaving Jackson High in 2015, like we, our evaluation process, whew, I, I saw teachers with um, like a cart, a cart that they would wheel in and then present all of this material. Um, it was a lot to manage. We had a lot to do with scores and uh, showing growth and all of that good stuff, which is all really important stuff. Um, but at Michigan Virtual, <laughs> I'll say like my first review, they called me in the office and they were like, it's time for your review. And I was like, really? <laughs> okay, I wasn't prepared. And they were like, that's okay, you didn't need to be prepared. We've been in your classes, which they're big on transparency. Um, they will get into your class. I can get into other classes. A lot of transparency is really, really important. But mostly it is a checklist of is this stuff visible in your teaching online? And if not, what help do you need to get it there? So it's really clear expectations. Teachers have the list ahead of time. They know what's coming their way. Um, your second question was about building relationships, I think. How to build relationships in an online setting. Um, I do like constantly, I'm like always putting myself out there for the students. And you know, you feel like you're maybe a little bit in like online dating, like is somebody gonna look over here? Are they, am I, is anyone noticing me? You know, I'm like, hey, you guys, where are you? What's up? Like, come meet me, come talk to me. Um, but they know that I'm there at least and they can access me when they need to access me. I've had a few students who will message me and they're so funny. They're like, hey, you know, this is my first online class and I'm that kid who wants to talk to the teacher all the time and I have a ton of questions and I'm like, great, yes, awesome, I love you. <laughs> you know, like, we're going to get along just fine. So talk to me whenever you want. Um, so it is important to still make those connections with kids. It's a little bit of a challenge, I think, but it's something you're always working towards for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's really tough. And I think anybody in my family would say, like, I thought you were going to have to work less now that you took this job. And it's not the case. Like, it's not the case at all. <laughs> um, but it is the one thing I think that helps um, before as a face-to-face -face teacher. I was constantly thinking and trying to figure out what am I doing tomorrow, the next day, the next day. Like, you're managing weeks at a time of your life. <laughs> all at once um, and I don't have that stress anymore because it's already done for me I just have to log in and take care of things so I don't have to look so far into the future I can work more in the present I feel like um, but yeah you do have to just shut down and take that time and I'm happy to say that Michigan Virtual is really good about saying like balance is important you guys you know let's have some fun too don't just work all the time so that's a good thing, but it's tough. It's difficult. Yeah. Um, the first time I was ever interviewed for them uh, for the part-time job, it was a phone interview and then a Skype interview um, for the full-time job. And what they're doing now with part-time positions and full-time positions is that you go through a phone screening after they've gone through your Apple chat and then you go to the office for an interview. So you will meet with somebody. Anybody else? I have business cards here. You guys are welcome. If you come up with a question, you're like, I just wondered about this. Feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer questions and talk to people. <laughs> I couldn't tell. Something here 
with, uh, with 360, but even, uh, we're always looking for ways we can improve that. So that was kind of the initial one. The second thing is, in about a month, maybe a month and a week or so, October, March 18th, um, there's going to be a meeting of a lot of uh, ed tech faculty around the state. And one of the things that's affecting, you kind of saw on the video that you know, Andrea showed about high educator when your president, Amy Fitzpatrick, talked a little bit about working with people and reference institutions. We can kind of figure out a way of thinking and embed some of the standards for um, an I -ed or an online educator into the teacher prep program so that, let's say, if there was a checklist of 12 things you need to know how to do, just coming from the Michigan teacher prep program, maybe you could check off three or four of those, and then you don't have as many things to cover with Michigan virtual to be an online teacher. So that's something we've been discussing with us for about a year, and uh, we're making progress on that. Another round of discussion in that country in about a month. So I thank you all for coming and I hope you have a great evening. We'll see you in about a month when we have uh, Steve Beth coming from NDE to look into the crystal wall and see what's coming in the world.